Opinions and ideas expressed in the following Moraine Valley Broadcast Channel recording are those of its creators and do not represent the views of Moraine Valley Community College. All right, this is the Dis and Discourse podcast with our group members. My name is Kyle. I'm Monica. I'm Diana. I'm Dan. And we're talking about discourse and the how the uh, food industry uh, manipulates popular and political discourse to fit their needs. Favor them. Favor them, mm-hmm. yes. Okay, so my understanding of what... Discourse. Di- yes, discourse yeah. is, is um, a communication of thought by words or talking in conversation, kind of like what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Does anyone else have any... Yeah, I have... I- it can be written or spoken mm-hmm. or even a debate of, like, through communication. So I found this one definition online that kind of, I think, captures everything that it's about, and it says academic discourse is more than grammar. It has functions like exposition, clarification, and conclusion requiring us to do things with language like explain, define, compare, contrast, classify, agree, disagree, illustrate, elaborate, make claims, see implications, infirm, exemplify, anticipate, and conclude. As a mouthful. Yeah, so I feel like that just that's like because this course is more than just like one specific thing. It's just like a broad spectrum of different yeah. things included. Yeah, that's that's, that's yeah. definitely for sure. I feel like there's more to it, but that, yeah. that's a good <laughs> that's a good place to start. Okay. And as said before, there's like all different kinds of communication: spoken, written, verbal, all that, oral, same thing. Okay, so our next the different types of discourse on obesity. There were some articles that I read online about what the food industry says pertaining to obesity. I've read from uh, it's well blogs from uh, New York Times saying that people are eating too much, blame uh, and that blaming fast food and sugary drinks is not right. That's what the food in- industry is saying. Yes. Yeah. So they're they're like. They have their own scientists trying to lessen the actual evidence by the actual academic discourse. So um, they're using words like balancing. So they have their own global energy balance to say, like, calories in, calories out, just balance. But it's really just, like, what you're eating. There was In one of the articles in class, there was a part in there that said that drinking sugary drinks makes, like, less likely... For you to like lose weight because it just messes with like the, it, your actual like body chemistry, um, and then there was also a part not it was not funded by like the food industry this research and it said that exercise actually makes you more hungry so it's just back and forth with the market not just hungry but also thirsty too because you get tired and worked out so you just want to drink and drink and drink more and to uh, continue off what monica said how they fund science make uh, seem like sugary drinks and other unhealthy food isn't contributing to the uh, obesity crisis but they also pay like lawyers and law firms to defend them tooth and nail so when we were watching the video about dr evil they always switch it around saying like oh it's the people's choice it's a nanny state yeah you know, like they were trying to go with uh, trying to get a soda tax and mm-hmm. they started getting like lobbies, lobbyists and lawyers in to create like different programs to like trump that and mm-hmm. try to solve it, but it's not really solving. It's just yeah. for their own benefit. On the subject of sugary drinks, there was this uh, other quote that I have from BigStory.org. It's a study: diet beverages are better for losing weight than water, and that makes me so mad to to even read. Because when they, when they do their research, they just pick and choose things that they found they want to put out to the public, whatever mm-hmm. is going to help them in like with their their sales, which kind of is the same thing that the, the tobacco industry did for where they were like they came out with like in the one article this I think it was a scho- scholarly journal it said um, they came out with light cigarettes instead of the full flavor cigarettes and that was healthier than full flavor. It's just they fill out all these researches and studies and stuff and they put it out there and you don't even know what's what anymore skies it so well that you don't even know that it's funded by these and companies. then it gets caught in the the public discourse mm-hmm. where they start believing what the market says not what the actual industry says because they have a lot of money to like put yeah. that like the first thing you see yeah public and popular yeah discourse. it's all over like there's like the part one of the articles that we read in class was saying that it's like infiltrating cnn and daily mail mm-hmm. where like a lot of people get their information from on the topic of research and studies though uh from the same website that uh, a big uh, story 
Dot org. Uh, I had read that uh, they did a study that uh, oatmeal was more filling among the. That they had like by partici- Quaker. Yeah, by Quaker they had like participants, and like forty eight of the participants said that oatmeal was more filling among all the other cereals. Things. Yeah, yeah, cereal and cereal bars and stuff. And so they published the what the results they got about oatmeal, but they didn't about like the oatmeal squares and you know the stuff that actually has more sugar. And so picking and choosing. Mm-hmm. Uh, As we said before, what the market says, how they're funding these uh, this different research, it's getting into the popular discourse and it's discrediting academic discourse. So people just think that obese people, they just don't exercise, even though they most likely do and it what they think it's it's not true because of what these funded researches are saying and then academic discourse is discredited there was this one quote um, in one of the articles saying that the marketplace is hijacking the scientific process in a disingenuous way to sow doubt and jeopardize public health to add on that exercise is a part but it's not the biggest no. of weight loss speaking from experience i know because i exercise but i don't i can't really control what i eat so mm-hmm. well so it's like the yeah, environment kind of um yeah but it's just you have to watch what you eat you can't mm-hmm. just exercise and disregard what you eat you can eat you can't eat garbage and just work out and then expect to lose weight it doesn't yeah. work that way yeah kind of like what kyle was saying my sister in the summer she changed her diet and she's lost almost 50, over 50 pounds just from dieting she barely even exercised so i think people should reevaluate what they eat for some people it's different than others i guess because i work at mcdonald's and like being around that food all the time it's hard to be like oh i want to eat this or i want this so it's like hard to distant yourself from it. Anything else you want to touch on? Um, I don't know the name of the journal, but there's a prominent medical journal on Monday published a uh, skating attack on global health advice to eat less sugar. Warning mm-hmm. to cut sugar. I don't know what the name of the uh, article is because I don't think they said it's it. It's study tied to food indus- industry tries to discredit sugar guidelines so they're saying, they're, the scientist's reasoning behind saying that they had to scrutinize it was saying that it was a low quality evidence that the, the first study was and that they were just trying to, we hope that the this is what the the food industry funded researcher said. We hope that the results from this review can be used to promote improvement in the development of trustworthy guidelines on sugar intake. So they're very man- manipulative with yes. their words. <laughs> yes, they are. Saying that, you know, these, that they argue that these are based on weak evidence and cannot be trusted. So mm-hmm. it's just, Discrediting yeah. academic, scientific. But then again, this is like a prominent medical journal. And then there's a re- there was a review published in the Annals of Internal Medicine that quickly um, gave criticism on the, from public health experts because of authors that have ties to the food and sugar industries. The review was paid for by the Internal Life Science in- Institute. They're a scientific group that uh, is based in Washington, D.C. and is funded by uh, multinational food and agrochemical companies including Coca-Cola, General Mills, Hershey's, Kellogg's, Kraft Foods. And that was the, the institute that was discrediting the sugar yeah. guidelines. Yes. So they're yes. biased because they're getting paid to say that stuff pretty much. Pretty much. Any other comments? I feel like we didn't really describe what popular and academic discourse was. I mean, as far as I'm aware, like, popular discourse on obesity is just... What the public thinks. Yeah, like, if you just walk up to a random person and you ask them, like, about this topic, like, what they would say, or if you post, like, a Facebook post, that's public discourse. Yeah. And then academic would be well, more yeah. research-based. And it goes through, like, a process of peer reviews, numerous editing, whereas, you know, popular is just someone's opinion. Exactly. If, yeah, if they don't have any knowledge of it, it's just what I really think. But then with the academic, and then it mixes in with the market, as we were saying, because the market is funding different studies, which is blurring the lines between market and academic, especially with the food industry, and they're doing it for their own profit. As far as popular discourse goes, I can assure you that if I were to post something on Facebook about it, I would get like a mixed results between you need to exercise more and just stop eating. Energy balance. Kind of. So what the market portrayed to Pretty much. the public. Calories in, calories out. But yeah, I think it's um the food industry really to try to shape what everyone says and thinks about everything. And they're successful at it. Well, pretty much. Once you, ch- once you look at what most popular discourse is, as we saw the YouTube video- videos in class where it's all personal responsibility. The only politically, I guess, um, Illinois County. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sure you've heard about that beverage tax they're putting on sugary drinks. And, that's yeah. and it's just... I'm almost. I can almost guarantee you it's because they were fighting that, or the beverage like, companies. I'm yeah. sure they were fighting that because. I think it was from. I think in one of the things it said 
It was from 2012 it came out that they wanted to have this tax, but it took a few years for them to actually go through with it because of the backlash from the market industry. Any other comments about uh, anything? Anyone else? No. no. Well, going back on to energy balance, most public health experts say that energy balance is an important concept, mostly because weight gain for most people is about calories in versus calories out, like you were saying. Um, but the experts say research like this, is it's clear that it's one side. They're trying to put the focus on something else, not mm -hmm. the food, but the exercising. Yeah, part of personal responsibility, yeah. is they like to say, and put they being Coca-Cola, Pepsi, all major. That it's not our products that are causing you to be obese. It's mm -hmm. you not exercising. It's you not doing this. You're not doing that. Mm -hmm. Or having the motivation. Okay, so I think that is okay. that covers most of it for our podcast. I think we got through a, a decent, decent amount. Yeah, of there's way more to be discussed, oh, but this is just the, the beginning. Yeah, yeah, the basics, not getting too in-detailed. So that's it. This is Dis and Discourse. And Thanks for listening.